Hello, my name is Akshay Tangsale, and you're watching the first of the weekly pre lecture videos for CHE 2162 Material Energy Balances. Today, I will talk about what was covered in week one and tell you something about the things that will be covered in week two, and also the homework reading and assignments or work problems that you need to do before you come to the lectures next week. So, in week one, we covered some of the logistics of this unit. I told you about the running of the unit and the methods of learning and teaching that will be adopted in this unit. The task for you this week is to enroll into the lab group as well as the Aspen Plus assignment group. Note the deadlines and uh, study accordingly. Keep up to date with your homework as well as classwork so that you don't fall behind when it comes to the busy period of the semester. Please remember to complete the concept mapping quiz. It is due on 3rd of August at 6 p.m. So you still have some time to complete it. Remember, completing this quiz will unlock all the lecture material that is coming up later in the semester. So the content-wise, we covered Chapter 2 of Eldrin Russo textbook, which covers units, significant figures, and process variables, which is Chapter 3. Uh, unit conversion is covered in the tutorial that is coming up in week 2 as well as the significant figures. Process variables uh, is an introduction to material energy balances and as such does not have any tutorial based on it. You will be applying that in chapter 4. I, before I finished in week 1, I gave you a homework problem. I'll show you in the next slide but please remember to do that homework problem. And also remember that in week two we start our tutorials. So here's the homework problem that I gave you at the end of last lecture and it's on conversion of a composition which is given on mass basis and you need to convert that into mole basis. It's a very important problem because you will be asked to do mole to mass or mass to mole conversion very often in material energy balances and this is something you will have to learn by practice. This is a solved problem from Felton Russo book. So if you get stuck, you can uh, use the book to look for way forward. I will give you step-by-step -step instruction just in case you don't have access to the book. So note that the composition adds up to 100%. And naturally, to convert to fractions, you need to divide each of those numbers by 100. So oxygen, for example, will become 0.16 as a fraction, carbon monoxide will be 0 0.04, carbon dioxide will be 0 0.17, and nitrogen will be 0.63. From then on, you need to choose a convenient basis, something like 100 or 1, and then you multiply total mass, which you have chosen as a basis, with the mass fractions of each of those components. That will give you the mass of each component. Then you divide each of those component masses by their molecular weight to give you the moles of each component. Once you have the moles of each component, you add up the total moles. That gives you the, the total moles that is in the system. And then you divide each of those moles of each component by the total moles. And that gives you the mole fraction of each of those components. To validate your answer, you can add up all the mole fractions and make sure that they add up to 1. So in week 2, we will finish the chapter 3. We'll look at how pressure measurements are made and uh, look at the di different devices that are used for pressure measurement. You will be using a couple of those in your laboratory when it, in week 7. We'll also look at temperature measurement, which is also something you will be doing in the laboratory. Then we move on to chapter 4. Chapter 4 is the heart of material balances. It covers uh, types of processes, the general mass balance equation, uh, process flow diagrams, which is very important because, as I said in week 1 lectures, you will be given a verbal description of a process, and the task for you is to dis d draw a process flow diagram on the basis of the verbal description. We will learn something about degrees of freedom, which essentially means that the number of information that you need to solve any given problem. 
and we'll talk about multi-unit processes on non-reactive systems. So we'll start off our material balances on single unit non-reactive processes and then go on to do multi-unit non-reactive process and then in week three and four we'll go on to do single unit on reactive processes and multi-unit on reactive processes. So the complexity goes um, increases as we move forward into weeks three and four. So week two is a very important week because it's the start of material balances and the foundation is laid in this week. So apart from the homework assignment I have given you uh, just before the moles, mass to mole conversion, you can also have a look at example 3.4-1 in Feldman and Russo and read through sections 4.1 to 4.5 which we will cover in the lectures next week. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you come prepared for next week's lectures. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.